Hey everybody, I'm Nathaniel Dodson from tutvid.com. Welcome into this Adobe Premiere Pro video editing tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at this VHS uh, retro faded effect and it looks a little bit something like this here that just came down over the video. And of course it all depends uh, on the type of video that you use. You'll get slightly different effects because it is just kind of, we'll package it up and turn it into a little bit of a preset, uh, but it's all customizable. It's all really cool. I think you're really going to like it. And if you do really enjoy this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you really love the video and you're looking to support the channel, I don't have a Premiere Pro course yet, but you can pick up a copy of my Photoshop course. It's all about how to retouch images in Photoshop. A link will appear somewhere up there. And there's also a link down in the description to this video. And without further ado, let's jump in and check out this tutorial. So here we are in Adobe Premiere Pro, and the first thing you'll want to do is drag out any old video clip. So let's go with this people crossing in New York City. I'm going to drag it onto my video track one here, and you'll see it says the clip doesn't match the sequence settings. Uh, let's just say keep the existing sequence settings uh, because we're going to be a little bit of a rebel about this. And there we go. Our video clip is in place looking very much modern, you know, just kind of as you would expect a standard a clip of video to be. But we're about to go in and start messing this thing up. And the first thing we need to do is create what's called an adjustment layer. Now the adjustment layer, we can create one by hitting the new item button right there and then choose adjustment layer right there, cool. And it's gonna say here's the adjustment layer, width, height, all that good stuff, hit okay. And there the adjustment layer is in the project bin. Drag this adjustment layer out over the video clip. So you can see it's very small, but if I move my cursor to the edge of the adjustment layer, I can just drag that adjustment layer out and now I have it so it's spanning across my entire video clip, great. So now in this adjustment layer, we're gonna start doing some heavy duty uh, editing and adjusting using the effects. So we'll click here on the effects panel and I'm going to collapse my presets here and we are going to type in brightness because I want to find the brightness contrast color correction and I'm going to drag two of them up into the effect controls panel right up here and now I'm doing this obviously I have the adjustment layer selected so we're placing those brightness contrast layer uh, effects excuse me onto this adjustment layer. Now what I'm going to do for the first brightness contrast I'm going to set it to negative 10 and the contrast to uh, 25 so that's plus 25 and then for the second brightness contrast, we're going to plus 10 the brightness and negative 25 the contrast. And it might seem like, what in the world did we just do? We just did the exact opposite. But look at what it did to the video. It gave us this almost faded Instagram look, which is actually kind of a, a neat little look in and of itself, but it's just the foundation for what is to come. So those two brightness contrast effects. And next up, we're going to begin embossing. And embossing, if we just type in emboss, we have an emboss and a color emboss. We're actually going to use both, but we're going to use the regular emboss first. So drag that, drop it up here beneath brightness contrast. You can see it's given us this crazy looking effect up here. Don't worry, we'll clean that up in a second. I'm going to leave the direction at 45 degrees. I'm going to set the relief to 3.0 and I'm going to set the contrast to 300. So we're really cranking this bad boy up and then we're going to blend it with the original to the tune of 80%. So you can see what we've got. In fact, maybe I should make this a little bit bigger. Let me just make this here a little larger. And you can see here, if I hit this little FX icon, we can shut the emboss off, turn it on. We're really beginning to get uh, an old, you know, almost Super 8 VHS cam type effect. We're also going to add a color emboss. I'm going to drag the color emboss up. Again, we'll leave direction at 45 degrees. I'm going to go with a 5.0 for uh, the relief in this case, and I'm going to leave the contrast at 100, and I'm going to blend this also uh, with the original at an 80% clip. So there we go. We've just kind of built out our emboss effect, and it's really just jittering the color around the edges and, and doing a lot to mess with that mid-tone contrast. Next up, we're going to apply a blur. So I'm going to type in blur down here in my effects panel, and I'm just going to use the fast blur because it's easy. I know it's an obsolete effect. We could you know what, actually, let's 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 uh, do something different. Let's do a, a directional blur here because it's almost essentially what the fast blur was. And we'll leave the direction at zero, and we're going to set the blur length to about three. Uh, that'll give us, oh, you know what, actually, I'm going to change the direction to like 90 degrees. I want it to be more horizontal than it is vertical. So directional blur of, with the direction of 90 degrees, blur length of three is beautiful. And we'll move right along. I'm going to look for another effect here called shadow highlight. So there it is. This is an obsolete effect, but it really works nicely for this uh, type of effect. So I'm going to drag shadow highlight into here. Now, I want to uncheck the auto. I don't want auto amounts. And we want to set the shadow amount to uh, 100. We'll leave the highlight amount at zero. And then we want to blend this with the original right around 35% works pretty well most of the time. And I know it seems super bright and blown out, but we're really just aiming to blast out highlights and edges of highlights. And we're going to kind of tone down the brightness in a moment because a lot of times that older footage almost had a, a, a darkness or underexposed value to it when shot with, you know, your off the shelf, you know, the consumer level camcorder. Next up, we're going to apply an HSL color balance. So I'm just going to type in color 
uh, balance and I want the color balance HSL under the color correction folder. I'm going to drag that into place. I'm not going to mess with the hue and here's where we're going to kill off a little bit of the exposure. We'll just like negative 15 the lightness. You can see we're just bringing it back and it almost gives the uh, the illusion that the contrast is being reduced. So that's pretty nice. And then we're really going to kill off some saturation. So go like negative 45, negative 50, really kill the richness in those colors because you really did not get a lot of richness in the color with a lot of those old VHS uh, effects or VHS cameras, I should say. And next up, I want to add a couple types of noise. So we're going to go uh, noise here, and I'm going to look for video effects, noise and grain, and I want the straight noise. So I'm going to drag noise in, and what we're going to do here is just set the amount of noise to 3%. We would like to use color noise. That's going to actually look nice and blend with our, our video frame a little bit. And then I also want right here above noise, we have dust and scratches. We're going to add that. This just tends to lend like some chunkiness to the noise. It just is a really nice effect for these older retro style effects, a radius of one, threshold of zero, and leave operate on alpha channel checked off, and that's good to go. So we can collapse dust and scratches. And last thing here for this adjustment layer, we're gonna look for an effect called wave warp. So I'm gonna type in wave, and I'll continue typing in warp. There we are, video effects distort wave warp. Drag that sucker up there. Now, as a default, as you can tell, it's just, whoops, and I think I messed it up there. At the default, it really does not, it, it does it, it does a lot of damage. I'll just put it to you that way. So we really need to tone this back. Um, so what I'm gonna do here, uh, we're gonna just start from the top here. Wave type, we're gonna choose triangle. Uh, wave height, we're gonna go with one. Wave width, we're gonna go with 10. So now you can see we're really bringing things back into kind of line. Wave Wave speed, we're gonna go with 0 0.5. We'll leave the direction at 90 degrees. I'm also gonna to choose to pin all the edges. That'll get rid of like this little bumpiness at the very edges. So we'll say pin all the edges and you'll see that'll kind of clean that up for us. And then we'll go, we'll leave phase at zero and anti-aliasing, oh, we'll leave that at low because really we don't want something that looks super duper high quality. So this is the first stage of the effect, but we're actually not finished yet. I'm going to make my preview just a little bit smaller here because we need to add a second adjustment layer. In fact, I'm gonna take this first adjustment layer, I'm gonna drag it up one because we wanna drag an adjustment layer underneath this. So I'm gonna come back to my project bin and I'm just gonna drag another copy of this adjustment layer, this guy right here. We're gonna drag it out and drop it beneath that initial adjustment layer. Once again, stretch it so it covers the entirety of the video, select that adjustment layer, and this is gonna be fairly simple here. We're gonna apply a simple blur. We'll go back to effects. We'll, we'll just use that same directional blur. So I'm gonna go blur. There's the directional blur. I'll drop it in place. We're gonna go with the direction of, once more, 90 degrees. We'll go with a blur length of, I don't know, let's go 30. We want it to be pretty extreme here. You'll see, look at that. It's really kind of messing things up. But we're gonna blend this and further blow out the highlights by changing the blend mode under opacity here in the effect controls. We can change the blend mode to color dodge and then reduce the opacity of this adjustment layer to 50%. And you're gonna see what it's gonna do. It's gonna give us a really, really nice effect. So there's before that adjustment layer, there's after that adjustment layer. It just gives us those really, really washed out, blown out highlights uh, that you really saw a lot in that old, you know, that old consumer level, consumer quality camcorder. So now that we have all of this, I'm gonna jump back over here to my effects panel. I'm just gonna hit this little X to clear the search bar to restore order here. And what we'll do before we do anything else and apply sort of the finishing uh, touch to this, this VHS retro look, let's save these two adjustment layers as presets so we can quickly create this VHS effect for any of our footage. Here's how we do it. So we have our first adjustment layer here. Now when we're, when we're doing this type of effect with uh, our clips, this will actually be like the first adjustment layer. So what I'll do is I'll select opacity here because I wanna save that property, hold down my command or control key and click on directional blur as well. So we select both of those uh, effects, right click and choose to save the preset. And I'll just call this like VHS hyphen layer uh, 01 because that'll be our, that'll be the first layer. Then I'll select that, uh, the second adjustment layer with all this stuff. I'll start just command clicking all of these effects here. Just go right down the line, select them all, right click save the preset, we'll go VHS hyphen layer hyphen O2. And then all you need to do when you have a new video is place two adjustment layers above the footage you wanna change, drag the, the first preset onto the first adjustment layer, the second preset onto the second adjustment layer, boom, you have VHS footage. But that's not it, because we can really set this effect off. If we run over to YouTube, there are a lot of people, and in this case, it's this guy Paul's vids, that give away free sort of old VHS interference, static grain, really amazing stuff. There's really cool text up here. Uh, but the point is, run a YouTube search for like a, or I'm sorry, a Google search for something like a YouTube video downloader, download a clip like this, save it to wherever you want on your hard drive. You can see here, I've dragged this video clip 
into Premiere Pro. And all you would do for sort of the finishing touch is drag this video up above above your topmost adjustment layer. You can see that it's smaller than our actual frame, so we can select that track. You see I'm selecting the VHS track, right click, and just choose to scale this to the frame size, and you'll see it'll just bump it up so it immediately fills the screen perfect. And then we can just cut it down. So I can just quickly grab the, the razor tool over here and just like zip that off, grab my selection tool right here, and select the big chunk out here, get rid of it, and then just you know select the edge of the clip and trim it up. So now we have this kind of cool grain that's applied above all of the effects we just created, but the problem is, obviously we can't see our video. So if we wanna take it to the point where we can see our video again, right? let's say we want to just save the noise, drop out all the black, well, it's pretty easy. Click on that VHS layer, and simply go over here to the opacity setting, and we're gonna to choose to change the blend mode to screen. That's gonna knock away all the dark stuff and just save the bright stuff. So now if we watch through our video, you can see that we have this really cool, very organic looking, very you know natural looking, old retro style, VHS style, Super 8 camcorder, whatever you want to call it style video footage. And it really is just that. So that's gonna be it for this one. I hope you guys have really enjoyed it. This one was a bunch of fun. I really enjoyed putting this together. It turned out kind of better than I even expected it would. Um, pretty stoked. I checked it against some actual legit footage from old cameras. I actually have an old camcorder sitting on my shelf back here. And it's like pretty convincing, I think. I think it looks pretty good. So I hope you guys enjoyed it for using adjustment layers and all the other stuff we used in Premiere Pro for this tutorial. Guys, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.